and welcome to another episode of Reading Reddit with Amber. Happy Spooky Sunday! Today we have another story from r slash no sleep. This one is part three of the story we've been reading the last couple of weeks, which was My sister-in-law keeps posting pictures of her baby on the internet and it's freaking me out. If you haven't seen parts one and two yet, I'd recommend checking those out first and then coming back to this one. I use creepy music in the background for these videos. Because the sound intensity level varies depending on whether you are listening with headphones or without, I have developed both a version that is best with headphones and a version that is best without. You are listening to the no headphones version. For the headphones version, click on the link in the description below. So today's story is, My sister-in-law keeps posting pictures of her baby on the internet and it's freaking me out, part 3. And this is by Starving Novelist. Hey everyone! Just updating from here and here. I think this might be the last you'll hear from me. On Saturday, Trevor shook me awake. The house smelled of French toast and syrup. Do you mind if I go to the gym for a couple of hours, he asked, raking my bangs out of my face. If Jonah is too much, you could always go to Mom's. It's fine, I said, sitting up and rubbing the sleep out of my eyes. He smiled, charming and handsome as ever. Trevor leaned down and kissed me on the forehead. Great, I'll be home in two hours, okay? Okay, I said. When he was gone, I went into Jonah's room. The baby was sleeping, white noise machine whirring in the corner. I pulled out the bag of clothes Tara had given us and spread them out on the floor, one by one. All of them were clean and perfect. Jonah woke up barely 15 minutes later. I cooed to him while I fed and changed him. He was getting bigger every day, but he was only now just as big as Jack's. I took my time choosing the outfits, soothing him as I pulled the clothes over his chubby hands and feet. I took pictures of him in his crib, in the front yard, laying on a blanket, against the fresh spring grass, sitting in the living room with his favorite toys, different outfits for each setting. When I was finished, I put Jonah back in his onesie and bounced him on my lap. He played with a plastic ring as I scrolled through the pictures one by one. Too sunny in one. His face was too red. He never smiled. His hair stuck up in tufts. Unsettled, I shifted him to one side so I could use both hands. I opened up Instagram and started applying filters. Too green. Too blue. Too, too, too. Frustrated, I switched over to Tara's page. There was another perfect picture of her darn sack of flour, geotagged in Charlotte, North Carolina. Caption, Welcome home, baby jacks. If they took her baby, I was the only one who knew. If they took her baby, I was alone. If they took her baby, everyone else looked at the flower and saw a glamour, saw a child, saw something that I could not. If. Mary helped me get the car seat out the following Monday. How are you sleeping, she asked, straightening the shoulder on my blazer. Trevor says you prefer to get up with the baby at night. I couldn't tell if she was saying it with pride or throwing an accusation. I shrugged, following her into the house with the diaper bag. It's calming, I said. You look exhausted. Another shrug. Have you talked to Tara? Of course, Mary said. She pulled Jonah out of his seat and hummed a song as she settled into her rocking chair for the morning. He was fussing a little, gnawing his hands in the edges of her bathrobe, probably about to cry at any moment. I crossed my arms over my chest. I had to get to work, but I also needed answers. And she went back to Charlotte, right? How are things there? Did she make up with Jax's dad? How's Jax doing? Mary eyed me oddly. She's fine. She found an apartment that she liked. Missed the South. Jax is good. She sent me a picture of him this morning. Oh, I said, feeling a rush of relief. If I could just see the picture, I'd get to the truth of it. I'd see Jax and the whole thing would be a hoax. Can I see it? Sure thing, Mary said. She pulled her phone from the coffee table and scrolled every second feeling like an eternity as her nails clicked against the screen. Here, she said, turning it to face me. He's getting so big, don't you think? I took the phone too greedily, and Mary's eyebrows shot toward her hairline. But I didn't care. I just needed to... needed to... I zoomed in on the picture, but it was unmistakable. The wicker basket was the same, and so were the blue blankets, all bundled around the bag of flour. Somehow, I managed it, said goodbye to Mary without seeming terrible, stumbled out to my car without giving away the nausea, 
I leaned with my head against the cool metal, breathing. There, in the glass window, reflected behind me, I saw her. Dark brown hair, twisted into a crown on the top of her head, knotted with leaves and twigs. A dress the color of moss, eyes dark like midnight pools of water. And there in her hands, against her breast, I turned quickly to catch it, to see her full on, to see something other than a reflection, a glimpse, nothing. The woman and the baby were gone. I saw them everywhere, in the park, bundled in prams, in the grocery store, upright in the front bit of the buggies, flower babies, flower sacks cradled to mothers, changelings. I searched all over for the fairies, for the trolls, for the unknowables that swapped and fled. I checked every Instagram I could find. They were out of control, all of them. At night, I couldn't sleep. I needed to make sure they weren't in my house. When I was sure Trevor was asleep, I got up and crept into Jonah's room. I didn't let my watch end. I had to stay diligent. I had to protect him. Sometimes, when I looked too closely in the mirror, I saw flickers of her behind me, inside of my eyes. Sometimes, when I didn't look closely enough, I saw my mother looking back. Annie! I woke with a start. A line of drool slipped down my chin and I wiped it away hurriedly. One of the senior accountants stood over me, papers clutched in one hand. He smiled sadly. Newborn, huh? He asked. I just nodded. I couldn't tell him about the changelings. I couldn't trust him. If he was a fairy, he would know I knew about him. He would find a way to Jonah. He clapped his hand on my back. Why don't you take a few days off, huh? Some sick time? I think you need to sleep. You're not looking well. A few days off? I could do that. More time with Jonah, more time to keep him safe. Right, I said, gathering my things. I think I will. That sounds like exactly what I need. Thank you. He smiled again, tight-lipped. I remember when mine was just a tiny thing. They grow so fast. You have to spend as much time with them as possible. He pulled his wallet out of his back pocket, flipped it open, and pulled out a weathered photograph. This is my carry, he said, turning the picture over. I didn't know how to tell him that his daughter had been replaced by a bag of flour. Nausea bubbled in my stomach, but I just nodded. Beautiful, I said. If they knew I knew, they'd take Jonah for sure. I had to be diligent. I had to be aware at all times. No one was safe. Not even Trevor. I hid the knife in the bottom drawer with Jonah's onesies underneath the stacks. Another in the baseboard between his crib and the wall. Just in case. Just in case. Trevor spent long minutes watching me. I thought he was becoming aware of me. I ignored him, scrolling through Tara's Instagram as I rocked Jonah, searching for signs. I had to know when Jax was taken for real, but the timeline was running together. I couldn't find the last picture of him as a baby. I couldn't do it. Babe, Trevor said. Hmm? What if I take Jonah to mom's for the weekend? We can spend some time together, just the two of us, and you could get some sleep. Would you like that? I looked up at him, horrified, terrified. No, I said, no, no, I want him with me. I would not let Mary take him. That's where it started, I knew, where they hid. The things in the backyard, the thing that takes, the thing that does not give back. On the back of my brain, searing, I remembered a horrible sign from some stupid yard sale in my youth, taunting and beckoning. Here there be fairies. They would not take. I would not let them take him, even if it meant being a shattered porcelain mother, a locked door mother, a do not, do not go, do not go in the forest mother. Trevor frowned, but he didn't say anything. They could get in at night. I heard them scratching the walls, pattering on the floors. I threw away all of my half-filled, forgotten bags of flour. At night, I held Jonah to me the entire time. I didn't even go to bed. I wouldn't leave him alone for a moment. I was a good mother. I was a good protector. All around the house they went, creeping. I watched the shadows in the windows. I made sure they did not leak inside. They did not come any closer. While I waited, awake, aware, 
I ran through the solutions in my head. Ways to get rid of the changelings. Throw the baby in a lake. Beat the child with a switch. Leave the baby unfed, crying in a field. Burn the child with a hot poker. That would fix it. The fairy mother would return to switch them back. In the blink of an eye, in the second between one breath and another, I'd have my son back. Except I'd never let them take him in the first place. One evening, Trevor forced me to lay down for a few hours while he ran errands. Time got away from me and my eyelids felt heavy. Worse and worse until I couldn't stand it. When I woke up, darkness had already fallen. Trevor was on the couch, laughing at some vapid TV show, a collection of flickering lights and two loud noises. I reached my hand over for Jonah, for the crib, and felt. My hands touched. Empty air. I sat up. Where's Jonah? I asked, the words slurred by sleep, crashing together as I leveled myself off the couch and towards the nursery. He couldn't be unattended. He couldn't be alone. Trevor couldn't be so stupid. He couldn't do this to me. He's... Annie, come here. And he was behind me in the hall, hands locking on my upper arms, pulling me back against his chest. His lips pressed to my temple, and all I could hear was the thudding beat of my heart, pounding in my ears. He's with my mom for the weekend. They're going on a trip, so we can get the weekend off together. Have some time for us. No. No, 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 no. If he was out of my sight, he was as good as gone. I turned in my arms, my nails becoming claws as they dug into Trevor's arms. Where are they? I hissed. Where is my baby? Trevor's face turned oddly uncertain, like he hadn't quite seen me before. Lakes. Switches. Starvation. Fields. Hot iron pokers. Drowning. Beating. Burning. Where the hell is my baby, Trevor? He let go of me, stepped back, looked away, rubbing his jaw with one hand. I wanted to claw him down to the bone, to choke him until the answers forced out of his lips. She took Jonah to see Tara for the weekend, to spend time with her and Jax. Tara! Friggin' Tara! Perfect Tara! Tara Changeling! Tara the Witch! I didn't say anything else. Before Trevor could stop me, I charged into the hall and pulled on my shoes, grabbing my keys and wallet. He was after me, following me into the driveway. Annie, he hissed, catching my arm, keeping his voice down for the benefit of our white fence suburban neighbors. Where are you going? I shot him an icy glare, pulling away and getting into the driver's side. I'm going to get our son back. Annie, he called as I pulled out. Annie, you can't. But the rest was lost to the wind the kick of the accelerator, and the screeching of my tires. Drowning, beating, burning. The miles raced by as darkness bleeds into dawn. Forests became thinner. The air at the gas station where I stopped to fill up and get coffee was warmer, muggier. Drowning, beating, burning. I would do what I had to to take back what was mine. I found Tara's address on an email from something Trevor had ordered for her on Amazon. It was nearing 11 when I pulled up in front of her house. The house was light blue with a wraparound porch and large windows open to the morning air. It looked horrifically normal. I got out of the car. The slamming of the door was too loud. Low music filtered through the windows, some sort of 50s rock that felt out of place and bizarre. The porch steps creaked as I ascended. My heart thrummed, oddly out of tempo. This felt wrong and terrible, and I couldn't figure out why. The front door was already open, just a crack. I pushed it open, stepping into an immaculately white hallway. Orchids stood in a vase on a low table. My own reflection stared back at me from the mirror above them, wide-eyed, spotty, a mess. Tara? Annie, she called from the kitchen. Come in. Trevor said you were on your way. For Jonah. For Jonah. For Jonah, I repeated in my head, biting the unease as I moved down the hall. There were no baby toys, no plastic coverings on the outlets. Everything looked breakable and dangerous and decidedly not childproof. Where's Mary and Jonah, I asked. And Jax. She stood in front of the sink, 
wearing a white dress and a light blue apron. Her blonde hair was pulled into a ponytail. She turned, and her lips were a gash of red lipstick, twisting into a smile full of teeth. Out, she said simply. She took a tea towel and wiped her hands, streaking it with something red and syrupy. The record player scratched somewhere in the house, caught, and the album continued. I fought a shudder. I just... I really need Jonah, I tried. I didn't want to leave the cool darkness of the hall, didn't want to step into the exposed, too white kitchen. Tara moved around the bar and pulled out a chair. Come sit, she said, patting the tall seat. I've made you a treat. I stepped into the room, momentarily dazzled by the sunlight. It was all Tara here, all clean edges and light colors and cut glass vases of fresh flowers, except she just finished baking something. A bag of flour sat on the counter, slashed open. I pressed a hand to my stomach. Pale fluffs of flour stood on the countertops, spilled out, eviscerated. Sit, she said, firmer. I felt sick. There was no other option. I sat down on the chair, looking away from the flour, taking in the rest of the room, the outside. A poker was out of place, leaning against the fireplace. Outside? A baby pool full of stagnant water, webbed with algae, like it had been there for weeks. Tara, I said. Bile rushed to my throat. Where is Jonah? Safe, Tara said, smiling wider. She turned and opened the oven, and I was hit by a rush of sweetness. Tara pulled out a pie pan. It's best when it's hot, she said, and it took me a beat too long to realize she meant the pie. Tara withdrew a wickedly sharp knife from the wooden block by the sink, cut into the pie. I looked away to the back garden where a bird landed on the edge of the baby pool. A raven, or a crow. It looked at me, cocking its head. Eat Annie, Tara said, setting the plate in front of me. You need your strength. I turned back to say something, to ask again where Jonah was, but she pushed the plate toward me. I looked down. Flaky, buttery crust. A vivid wash of red. Sticky, bulbous cherries leaked out of the pie, staining the plate crimson. Tara took a fork out and pressed it down on the top of the crust, sending gelatinous syrup oozing around the cherries like arterial blood. I looked up, caught her eyes. Her gaze was strangely unfocused, her smile too sharp and too red. Eat, Annie, she said. My palms felt clammy and terrible. Tara, where is my son? She leaned forward, sparing a cherry with one pointed nail. She delicately took it between her teeth. Syrup leaked out down her chin. She didn't wipe it away as she swallowed without chewing. He's safe, Fanny, she said, turning the fork around to offer me the handle. That's all we can ask for, that our babies are safe. I took the fork between my fingers. She leaned back against the counter, watching me, judging me, as I leaned forward and took the first bite. I hope you enjoyed today's video. So far, this is the final update, but hopefully the author will give us another post someday. If there is an update, I'll be sure to let you know. Thanks for watching and have a great day.